Hello there. My name is Bill Coachman. Welcome to another edition of Bill's Bible Basics. In this video, I will be sharing with you part two of my article entitled Star Wars The Real Battle Wages On. I first published this article on June 18th of the year 2000 and it was last updated on May 8th of 2018. So before we get into this, let's have a short word of prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again that we can get together to share your word. Thank you, Father, that we have the freedom to do so, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will anoint and bless this time and that you will anoint me as I read this article, Lord. Help me to read slowly and clearly and loudly, Lord, so that everyone can understand what I am sharing with them today, Lord. I pray, Father, also for our listeners, that you will give them seeing eyes, hearing ears, and receptive hearts to the truth which is contained in this article. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So then, let's continue with part two of Star Wars, The Real Battle Wages On. As I concluded in part one, while at one time long ago, the devil, or Lucifer, was God's very own covering cherub and light bearer, due to his own pride and vanity, and as a result of not being happy with his exalted position in the halls of heaven, he foolishly rebelled against God, along with a third of the other angels. The end result was that a great war occurred in heaven. In the aftermath, Lucifer was thrown out of heaven and he was cast down to the earth. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus himself briefly spoke of this event when he said the following, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Luke 10.18 Isn't that amazing? I had never taken that verse so literally before. But according to Jesus' own words, he was there. He watched as Lucifer, or Satan, meaning adversary in both Hebrew and Greek, was cast out of heaven due to his foolish rebellion against God. As I mentioned in the article, when was Satan cast out of heaven? I can only wonder if Jesus was up one early morning <clears throat> excuse me, praying to his father when he witnessed the devil being cast to the earth. Maybe it was just like a shooting star or meteor when it strikes the edge of the earth's atmosphere and suddenly brighten, brightens up, leaving a long trail behind it. Or maybe, as the verse states, Satan's foe literally appeared as a sudden bright streak of lightning in the sky as that foul fiend struck the earth. I find this scenario really creepy, and I will tell you why. I don't know how many of you have seen the 2005 version of War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise and Dakota Fanning, but in that particular movie version of H.G. Wells' famous book, the alien invaders arrive on the earth by transporting down in flashes of lightning. Is that just a matter of coincidence or what? I have sometimes wondered how much the head honchos in Unholywood have taken concepts from the Bible and then incorporated them into some of their science fiction movies. At any rate, however it occurred, we know that Jesus saw the devil's fall. As I point out in other articles, what we also know is that Satan arrived on earth with great wrath, as we see by the following verse. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Revelation 12.12 12. Considering the great wrath in his wicked heart, is it really any wonder then that when he arrived here, Satan and his vile minions, meaning both his spiritual and physical minions in the form of human cohorts, began to wage war against the children of light? Is it any wonder then that he, along with those same evil companions, began to go about pretending to be angels of light in order to deceive the people of earth with their subtle lies? 
Is it any wonder then that even today, so many people, such as New Age thought advocates, Wiccans, and folks who follow Oriental and Middle Eastern religions, are so convinced that they have found the light, when in fact they are actually walking in spiritual darkness? Consider the following verse, written over 2,500 years ago, which reveals how Satan's crowd has been using this very same tactic for literally thousands of years. Woe unto them the co-evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Isaiah 5.20 if that verse doesn't perfectly describe today's deceived society, then I don't know what does. As we learned in part one of this article, the Apostle James referred to God the Father as the Father of Lights. In stark contrast, Satan is clearly the Father of Darkness. In fact, as I explain in a number of other articles, in the eighth chapter of the Gospel of John, while rebuking his unbelieving Jewish enemies, Jesus called the devil the father of lies. Furthermore, he told them that they were the children of hell and that the devil was their true father, as we see here. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. John 8 verses 44 and 47 While in the following verses, the Apostle Paul is referring specifically to the false Jewish brethren who had crept into their midst, as I point out in other articles, there are many such false so-called light workers scattered throughout modern Christianity and the world today as well. These folks preach a very different Christ from the Jesus Christ of the Bible and a very different gospel from the gospel of the KJV Bible. They are liars, deceivers, and antichrists who will not lead you to the throne of our Heavenly Father, and much less to eternal life. One particular high-profile person who I've written about in another article is Oprah Winfrey. That woman talks about a so-called christ light and strongly insists that Jesus Christ is not the only path to God the Father. Now consider the truth which is revealed in the following verses. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 4 and 13 through 15. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous woods enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Acts 20, verses 28 through 30. Now I beseech, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Romans 16, 17. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, 
or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Galatians 1, verses 6 through 9. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. 1 Timothy 6, verses 3-5 through 5. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. 2 Timothy 4, 3 But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. 2 Peter 2, verses 1 and 2. Thus, as we learned in part 1, we must remain grounded in God's word, so that we can differentiate between the truth and the lie. We must steer clear of such modern deceivers, and avoid their works of darkness at all cost. If there is one thing which I hope you learn from this article, it is that a very real war continues to be waged today between the children of light and the children of darkness, just as it has been waged for thousands of years. There is a very real Star Wars being conducted between God's star children and and Satan's false wandering stars. It is not just on the movie theater screen. It is happening in real life every single day as people make the choice to either accept or to reject Jesus Christ based on our testimony and witness. The weapon of choice is not some kind of futuristic laser sword as seen in the movie series of the same name. Rather, it is the old tried and proven Word of God. For as it is written in the scriptures, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5. Those strongholds of which the Apostle Paul speaks are found in the very minds and hearts of men, because that is where the real battle is being waged. That is where the enemies of truth seek to influence people. According to Thayer's Greek-English lexicon, the terms strongholds and imaginations in fact refer to the personal views, opinions, arguments, and reasons used by men to fight against the Word of God. It is a subtle war of thoughts and of words between the truth of God's Word and the lies espoused by the children of darkness. It is an ongoing war to free men from the shackles of sin and spiritual deception in order that they might experience the glorious liberty of the children of God. Of course, the only way that such freedom can be achieved is if they choose to accept and believe in the liberating truth 
of the very word of God. For as Jesus himself said to the Jews of his day, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. John 8, verses 31 and 32 and 36. Notice that Jesus very plainly states, If ye continue in my word, as I have already made clear to you, that is the only way in which we can hope to avoid falling for Satan's lies and deceptions. If we know God's word, and if we continue to abide in his word, then we won't be so ignorant of Satan's devices. That is, hopefully, we will not fall victim to the subtle, evil, deceptive thoughts which he tries to place in our minds. As the Apostle Paul writes in the following verse, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11 It is for this very same reason that in the verses I shared a moment ago, Paul tells us that we must bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We must control our thoughts. We must make certain that our thoughts are in line with the word of God. I cannot overemphasize that the real battle is a battle within the mind because actions, whether they be good or evil, initiate as thoughts in the mind. This is why Paul also tells us that our minds must be in fact transformed and renewed. In essence, we must all be rewired and we, mu and we must put on the mind of Christ, which is simply to be obedient to the will of the Father consider the following verses. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 what we all need to realize is that there's no vacation from fighting this war. We cannot join the Lord's army and then someday just suddenly decide to quit. As we learned in part one, we simply cannot become so weak in a spiritual sense that we faint in our minds and give up. We cannot be weary in well-doing because the truth is, while we may decide to quit, the enemies of our souls never quit. They will smash us into the ground until we are totally defeated. So we have no choice but to put on the armor of light and to put on the whole armor of God and to fight the good fight of faith until the day in which the Lord calls each of us to our eternal home. Why? Because we are God's star children. We are God's star fighters. We are God's children of light. And this world's salvation depends a lot on our willingness to keep fighting in this great war. So please consider the following verses and be encouraged. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Romans 13, 12 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand an evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit 
and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Ephesians 6, verses 10-18 Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. 1 Timothy 6.12 Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. 2 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Hebrews 12, 4. In conclusion, then, from all of the scriptural evidence we have now examined, it should be clear to you that we can either be stars which obediently revolve closely around our Heavenly Father, the Father of lights, according to His perfect will, or else we can choose to be rebellious, fallen stars who not only wander lost and confused in the depths of spiritual space, but who have also foolishly and perhaps ignorantly taken sides with the very enemies of our souls. We can either be true stars which emanate and reflect the spiritual light of Jesus Christ as he commanded us to do, or else we can be dark and spiritually dead stars. We can be similar to black holes which offer no life or even light. Consider the following verses again. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. Daniel 12, 3. As I pointed out at the beginning of this article, the only way in which we can avoid the latter condition is by making certain that we maintain a healthy hunger for God's word. For it is through God's word and by God's word that we are all constantly cleansed, renewed, spiritually strengthened, and refreshed. Furthermore, his word will lead and guide us into all truth, and it will convict our hearts to do what is right and pleasing in God's sight. Not only that, but it will help us to keep the heavenly vision, and that is to remember that we truly are the children of the King, the Father of lights. Finally, be grounded in God's Word. I'm sorry, being grounded in God's Word will also protect us from deception, and it is surely everywhere at this current time. Yes. Oh, Gio, I'm almost done, my friend. You wait here, okay? <laughs> the intruder is back. He's got to break the spear, doesn't he? I was going there. <laughs> oh, Joe, please lay right there, okay? Let Poppy finish, okay? I'm almost done. We're at the very end. Yeah, but we're at the very end, sir. No, no, you can't go that way. <laughs> Come on, baby. Give Papa a break. No, no, not that way. Yeah, yeah, lay down right there. Lay down, lay down. Put your butt down. Lay, lay. <laughs> oh, my handsome boy come on I'm almost done he's very insistent can I just finish this please okay you just broke the spirit of what I was reading go find polo go ahead go find polo girl here he comes again oh uh, okay I'll have to put you on the floor I'm sorry goodbye I'll be done soon, okay? He's going to probably just jump back up here again anyway. All right, let's try to finish this. We have just two paragraphs to go. So tell me, do you stay grounded in God's Word so that you are a star who shines brightly for Jesus Christ? Are you a burning ember for the Lord? Does God's unquenchable Spirit burn within you so strongly that you really have no choice but to share His Word with others in some form? I certainly hope so. 
your work, your rewards will be great if you do. Oh, gosh. LGO, look, I'm tripping up my, my, my headphone wire. Okay, right here is good. Right here is good. Okay. He's busy sucking on my arm. He's a big baby. All right. Let me just scroll up here a little bit, and we're going to get these two last two paragraphs done. We're going to try again. Sorry, folks, for the interruption. So tell me, do you stay grounded in God's Word so that you are a star who shines brightly for Jesus Christ? Are you a burning ember for the Lord? Does God's unquenchable Spirit burn within you so strongly that you really have no choice but to share His Word with others in some form? I certainly hope so. Your rewards will be great if you do. With these words, I will bring this article to a close. I trust that you have enjoyed it, learned something from it, and I pray that it has been a blessing in your life. If you have an account with Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, or with any other social network, I would really appreciate if you would take the time to click on the corresponding link that is found on this page. Thank you so very much. May God bless you abundantly. For additional information, you may want to refer to the list of reading resources below, which were also mentioned in this article, or which contain topics which are related to this article. All of these articles are likewise located on the Bill's Bible Basics website. So now I'm going to read off this list of articles. And... Uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, all of these articles, if you go to the actual uh, article on my website, Bill's Bible Basics, and scroll down to the end of part two here, you will notice that all of these titles I'm about to read to you are actual, actually uh, clickable or tappable links. So you can just tap on any one or click on any one, and it will take you directly to the article in question. So the articles are... 2012, New Age Deception and Psychobabble, Apostasy of Oprah Winfrey, America's False Prophetess, Are You a Burning Ember for the Lord, He Who Fights and Runs Away, Choose Your Battles Wisely. Okay, let me read, that, that was all one title. <laughs> I didn't read that right. He, he Who Fights and Runs Away, Choose Your Battles Wisely. Okay. Is Jesus the only begotten Son of God? Once upon a time, a true story. Satan, his origin, purpose, and future. So you really think you are so humble? The battle is not yours alone. The children of light, are you one of us? The heavenly vision, have you got it? The Lord will lift you up. When was Satan cast out of heaven? So, all those articles have something in them which ties indirectly to this article that I just read to you. Uh, in fact, uh, as my time permits and as my health permit, I intend to record all of these articles uh, and place them on my YouTube channel, Bill's Bible Basics. So you can look forward to finding these articles in recorded form sometime in the future. I can't promise how soon that will be, but uh, right now you might say I'm on a roll because uh, I've just over the past week, oh, just over the past week or so, I've recorded, I think, I don't know, maybe close to five articles now. So as long as my health is well and I'm filling up to it, I'm going to do my best to continue to record these articles for those of you who don't have time to actually sit down and read them on my website. So, with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. Besides, this little, this guy right here, this guy, this guy, <laughs> is bugging me right now, so. Anyway, God bless you. I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, article. Star Wars, the real battle wages on. So keep fighting, my friends, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Don't give up.
Don't become weary in well-doing. Don't fade in your minds. Stay grounded in God's word. Stay strong. Fight the good fight of faith. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all and bye-bye for now.